Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ahmed Belgana. I'm a solutions engineer uh, based out of Montreal. Um, I work for HashiCorp. Um, and we'll be looking today at one specific topic, which is how we deploy Vault uh, in, in production, specifically if we have um, like uh, requirements around DR and high availability. I'll be using the documentation um, on the w uh, available on the website um, rather than slides, so you can know exactly how to navigate the documentation, how we can find this information yourself, but I'll go through um, everything that I, I think uh, important to see. So if you go to learn.hashicorp.com, uh, you will find specifically Vault documentation under, uh, under Vault, and we'll be looking today at deploying your first cluster um, with Vault. There is um, just an introduction, and after that, we have the reference architecture. Um, and this reference architecture summarizes everything from network connectivity, um, recommendation of like a single uh, region deployment, multiple region deployments, and some of the best cases architectures that we uh, that we see. Let's look at the first recommended architecture, and here. Um, we have uh, a single region uh, deployment, and within the single region deployment, we see two components. Um, you can see that we're using a uh, console, and, and there is a vault. And everything here is uh, are just the clients that consume the, this, this vault. And uh, a single reason today, most of the cloud providers um, uh, pro provide multiple availability zones or they support having multiple availability zones. And just taking this um, this architecture uh, um, and just deploying uh, our nodes with our vault or console in, a, in separate availability zones make the, uh, the deployment highly available. So if one zone is um, it is not accessible, we can still have our uh, workload or our vault deployment um, in uh, two different availability zones. And once once the uh, like zone E returns back, we'll see that like everything again uh, starts working, and and we have a reconciliation between the data that is on uh, everything that is on Z zone A and zone B and zone C. Um, so you can see here uh, that we have uh, one, like three non-voting consoles and, and three um, servers of consoles, um, one leader and two followers, and we have three um, three vaults. So the, we always have one vault cluster that is, uh, one vault node that is active, and all the requests that are sent to the other vaults um, are uh, proxies, uh, proxy to the, to the active node. So um, this is just single uh, single reason. This is how we provide high availability for uh, one specific reason. And um, actually, this um, this is also supported by uh, the OSS version. So you always want to have not only Vault running with uh, with an attached storage or local storage. You always want to have um, to provide high availability, uh, specifically if you're running it for uh, production workload. So once we uh, once we know exactly um, like this specific deployment in a single region, we can start thinking about okay, but how if um, I have a workload that uh, spans across two regions, like uh, Europe uh, East and Europe West, or um, Montreal e uh, Canada East and Canada West, or or US, right? <laughs> And I don't want to incur latency. I want the same cluster to be, um, or the same data to be available in the two um, in the two reasons. Um, and I want the workload to go to the closest reason um, uh, possible. Um, and for that, we have what like a multi-reason uh, deployment, um, and we call it a performance replica. And a performance replica can be used to scale. Uh, horizontally, but it also can be used to um, to to have multiple regions served uh, with the with with kind of the same the same big cluster, um, and and the data is um, is copied from one cluster to the other. Um, here you can see that. 
we have three different reasons um, and we have one single cluster that is performance replicated um, and and by performance replication like to me it means that we have an active active uh, mode where um, all the requests read requests will go to um, will be served from uh, each one of the clusters and uh, write requests um, if it's a write request it will be proxies the uh, proxy to the um, to the active cluster and the active cluster will commit the change and everything will be again sent to the um, to the other um, to the other clusters now uh, you can see that we have a different path here so we have our performance cluster and we have a path to go um, to like reason one and we have our DR. So DR is disaster recovery, um, uh, is a disaster recovery uh, cluster and this disaster recovery cluster is um, what I call a cold standby um, and this cold standby is it, like it, we copy all the data here everything is copied here and um, it, we don't answer requests so if a request comes to the DR cluster um, it, it the DR cluster will not respond until it it is promoted as the primary DR uh, uh, the primary cluster and once it becomes the primary cluster it takes over exactly uh, where um, the, the the primary cluster um, left now the difference between those two uh, replication is um, is um, every like every every client that needs to consume Vault and needs to authenticate to Vault. And once the client is authenticated, it receives um, it receives a token. So those tokens, for example, are not copied. So everything that has a time to live, uh, most of the time is not copied to the performance replica. So if we are filling over from region three to region one, the client will need to re-authenticate. Now, if this performance replica is um, uh, like we lost this this replica uh, this cluster and we um, we went to DR all the clients will not need to uh, to authenticate because we copy all the data there so some uh, of the customers use uh, dynamic secrets um, like DB credentials um, or um, EWS credentials so if we have a time to live for those credit type of credentials they're not copied to the performance replica. They're only replicated into the DR. So if um, once the time, once the time um, to live expires and uh, Vault need to drop the username password on the DB, uh, the performance replica can do it. Uh, if we need to switch, we'll need to switch to the DR and the DR can perform this uh, drop request. So Everything that has a time to live usually is not copied to the performance replica. Great. So you can see that this is like a high level reference architecture. What we can also have is the same performance replica and we have a DR within the same, uh, the same reason. Uh, again, the exact same thing. It doesn't need to be in another region. What we usually do is we um, we calculate the pros and cons of each solution, and each solution makes sense for specific workload and specific customer. So, and this is what um, what I called uh, what I called here. So, it's a, just a resiliency against the cluster failure, and the first one is um, provides a sorry provides a resiliency against a region failure. Great. Um, so I, I don't really recommend on uh, deploying uh, Vault in one availability zone. Um, again, we don't have um, enough uh, enough. The, um, uh, we don't provide enough uh, high availability high availability when we um, when we deploy it all in one availability zone. So we can just do two EZs, which is better than one one easy. Um, and after that, we can have whether um, again um, performance uh, replica or um, or or a DR or or mix uh, mix both. So 
Now we uh, on one that four uh, we released what we call the integrated storage. So Vault integrated storage, we are no longer relying on uh, storage that is outside of Vault, um, which in the case that we've seen was console. Uh, we can we ported the same uh, library that is used to do um, like replication or reconciliation between uh, or the consensus protocol that is used within uh, console. We ported it to Vault. So we don't have to operate um, two different binaries. We don't need to learn two different um, configurations. Um, two configurations. So we we need only to understand how we configure Vault and how we do it correctly. We don't need to understand how we um, configure Vault and console and how we harden console. So it, it makes it just a little bit easy to operate and and easy um, to um, to harden. The second part is we uh, have to operate less number total number of servers um, so sometimes customers are very sensitive to costs of operation then like we have three servers less that we recommend in our um, in our reference architecture so let's look at how it looks uh, now so and this is um, this is a high, um, high, like a high-level diagram that explains how we we um, we can uh, deploy a high-available vault uh, cluster with integrated storage. You can see here we decided to have in zone A or one zero whatever. Um, uh, two different um, nodes, zone B, one node, and zone C, uh, two nodes. And those are five nodes. So the idea here is we need five nodes to have the same availability um, that is provided by, uh, that, that is provided by console, um, just because of the underlying raft protocol that is used. And this is uh, for, um, that is, this is recommended for a production uh, cluster. So again, this is going to be one reason. If we have multiple reasons, we will have um, its clusters uh, run in a single reason. We can have also, again, performance replication or DR, the exact same uh, recommendations that we've, uh, we've seen um, in, the first, uh, in, the first, uh, in the first diagrams. Great. Um, so you can see here how big um, those are the the ports that we uh, we require, um, and I also think that we have the the node size um, the node size that we need. So if you can see here specifically for if we're deploying on AWS, Azure, or GCE, if we have a small cluster, means we don't have a lot of read uh, writes. We're just using it for say CD or some, some lightweight uh, operations. Then we can go with a small, um, a small uh, VMs. Um, and if we have a large uh, cluster, we need um, something a little bit bigger. Um, and this is like for uh, production. Um, for like a workload that needs to handle a lot of read uh, read write requests. Great. So now, uh, one specific thing that um, we sometimes overlook is how we do um, how we do operate um, how we do use uh, auto NCL or how we NCL our vault when we have uh, when we deploy it on um, with our uh, performance replica or or DR. How we can use the auto uh, what are the auto NCL or Shamir and what are the combinations that we can use. So you can see here, uh, we have this valid architecture, which is HSM or cloud. So we have a primary that uses HSM, um, and the secondaries can use um, you know, whether HSM or cloud. Uh, what we don't recommend is uh, having something that primary using HSM and having secondaries, uh, one of the secondaries use Shamir. Um, this, uh, this one, work actually it's um, it's it's not recommended um, uh, architecture deployment um, because of the um, because of the reason that is outlined here now um, another valid architecture is to have a, a primary using Shamir and the secondary is using what are Shamir or um, or HSM so um, that 
covers pretty much everything. We looked at how we um, recommend running Vault with integrated storage and with, uh, and and using console within just one region. We looked at DR capabilities and performance replication, and uh, we looked at their recommended. Uh, as a size of VMs uh, for uh, integrated storage. The recommended size of VMs also is on the documentation. It's covered on the first document we looked at, and we looked at the consideration related to HSM integration today. Thanks. Uh, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, it was a pleasure um, preparing this presentation for you. Hey, uh, thanks, uh, Ahmed, for the great talk. Uh, on Vault, we all learned a lot today. So uh, let's uh, let's take a couple of times for Q and A. Q &A. Uh, right now, I got one coming in. So what what could be the potential impact of not having Vault in a high availabil availability mode? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, I think uh, like just just to make this clear, um, the. Uh, the high of like having a DR uh, is an enterprise feature. So that I think the question is tailored towards um, what is the impact if I'm using OSS and I have just standalone cluster. Um, so if 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 something is uh, if we have specific RTO RPO um, that is required by the applications we're running uh, and those applications are accessing. Um, uh, and those applications are accessing um, uh, like real-time secrets. Um, we might hit, uh, we might miss this RTO RPO that, that is required. So, um, so it, it like honestly, it depends on the application. Um, if if we can have like if we can have more details about what is required in terms of RTO RPO, I can I can like better uh, answer this question. All right, uh, thanks. Great answer, it's pretty clear. Uh, another question that we often get when we, we meet with clients that want to use Vault, it's uh, when we talk about the sizing of clusters uh, and the concern of them, it's always important where you spend the money. So what, what would we expect on the A environment, HA environment for Vault on the, on the sizing of clusters? So sizing of clusters, uh, if we have if we have a cluster that is on production, um, I, I think like the 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 recommended size uh, sizes for um, the VMs is uh, in the documentation. Now, if we have a DR, we'll need the exact same um, the exact same size of uh, of uh, of of, um, of servers or or VMs. So like we we need to double that. So if we have now, uh, if we're running now integrated storage with five servers and we're serving production cluster um, or production traffic, if we have a DR, we'll have the exact same replica. Um, so which doubles the, the, the amount of CPU and RAM required. All right, good, that's good. Uh, I got one more question that came in. So uh, uh, in all the, uh, the diagrams that you showed us and the, the architectures, uh, we see that consult is heavily used and talked. So, is there is there a dependency on Vault towards consult, or can we use uh, uh, Vault in any different type of architectures? So, um, like this, like to answer specifically this question, yes, we can use Vault in like with whatever um, backend uh, that we want, like storage backend that is, um, and we have a lot, so we can support a lot of storage backends, but the caveat is we only um, provide enterprise support for two different backends. Now it's the integrated storage, and the other one is, um, is um, is console. So if we integrate with uh, Spanner, for example, um, it's it's going very hard for us to uh, provide full support or end-to-end -end support uh, in terms of storage as well. 